。好嚟到二零一三年第七条题目就系做实验嘅题目啦。今次咧我哋想去研究嘅咧就系一棵植物嘅向光性。咁我哋有四支嘅杯牙鞘，佢哋都经过唔同嘅处理嘅。第一号装置咧就系完整嘅杯牙鞘，第第二咧就冇咗个末端嘅，第三咧呢个末端嘅位置咧就用一个唔透光嘅帽咧去笠住咗佢嘅。而第四呢，就係成支杯牙鞘呢，係埋咗落去個泥土個雪，淨係得個頂端呢，係暴露咗出嚟嘅啫。而呢四支嘅杯牙鞘呢，我哋係將佢擺咗喺個黑盒入面啦。而喺呢個黑嘅側邊呢，我哋打咗個窿，就容許有單質光去照入去呢個黑盒個雪。而我哋亦都獲得唔同嘅結果啦。第一個裝置同第四個裝置咧，個杯牙鞘都能夠成長，而兼且會轉彎嘅。而第二個杯牙鞘咧，佢既冇成長，亦都冇轉彎嘅。而第三個杯牙鞘咧，佢有成長，但係就冇轉到彎。咁 A part 就問我哋啦，利用實驗嘅結果去解釋翻杯牙鞘嘅邊一個部分係去探測單質光 （unilateral light） 嘅咧？成條題目就係考緊我哋呢個杯牙鞘嘅頂端嘅位置。對於個植物嘅向光性有咩嘅重要性呢？咁當然啦，我哋喺書本係點都學過嘅，所以啦，你嘅第一分呢係一定答得到嘅。邊一 part 啊？梗係個貼啦，起碼有一分。但係你就要學識利用結果啦。所以相對應嘅 critical skills 呢，就係去比較返 set up 一二三四究竟有啲咩意思啦。如果我哋比較 set up one and two 嘅話呢，冇咗個頂端，咦，又唔成長又唔轉彎，喎。咁即係個貼呢，應該都幾重要下嘅。咁如果要比較一同三嘅話呢，我哋第三個裝置俾咗一個唔透光嘅帽去笠住個頂端，喎，就發現啦有成長但係唔轉彎。嗯，咁我哋就知道啦個頂端呢，應該同個轉彎呢都有關係嘅。而第一同第四呢，我哋就發現啦，無論遮唔遮住個身體嘅部分，成個杯牙鞘都有成長，都有轉彎。啲答案呢都呼之欲出㗎啦。我哋書本亦都學過，就係、是、個頂端呢，就係、是、負責探測單質光。既緊要用實驗嘅結果啊，咁啊，因為我哋比較返第一、第二同第三個裝置呢，我哋發現啦，如果個貼呢係斬咗去，或者攞頂帽 cover 住嘅話呢，原來都係冇咗一個轉彎嘅成長，即係話啦，即使有成長，都唔識得向住啲光嚟散。咁講完頭三個裝置啦，冇理由唔講第四個㗎。第四個裝置就係講啦，使成個杯牙鞘嘅下部係埋咗喺泥土入面，牙鞘仍然係會成長同埋顯示到一個正向光成。有到 Part B 呢，就要我哋解釋下點解一定要有 Set Up Free 嘅出現啦。咁其實 Part B 要考我哋嘅呢，就係對照裝置有幾咁重要性，而我哋都要知道邊個係對照裝置。第一個裝置呢，佢係實驗裝置，因為佢成支嘅杯牙鞘呢都種響樹。而第二個裝置就已經係對照裝置啦，因為我就特登斬咗個頭去，就話俾你聽嗱，冇咗個頭，未唔識成長，唔識轉彎咯，夠巴閉未啊？咁啊到第三個，咁你話佢係咩嚟嘅呢？其實佢都係對照實驗嚟㗎。咁啊，因為一同二係可以比較，一同三都可以比較，只係爭在呢個對照實驗，想話俾我哋聽嘅係乜嘢呢？就係、是、想話俾我哋聽，係喺第二個裝置嘅時候，哎呀，佢又唔成長，又唔識得轉彎，有人會挑戰你嘅。你知唔知自己衰乜嘢呀？因為呀、啊，你連棵杯牙鞘都整爛埋呀，咁整爛咗囉。佢梗係又唔識得成長，又唔識得轉彎啦。哦 ，OK OK， 我俾返第三個裝置嚟啦。嗱，個頭喺度㗎，但係我攞個唔透光嘅帽呢，去笠住咗佢，睇下佢冇反應囉。嗱，有成長，不過唔識轉彎嘛。而家我研究緊正向光性，植物嘅徑嘅部分啦，梗係應該係有正向光性 b 去個單質光㗎啦。嗱，而家見唔到啦，你就唔好挑戰我頭先喺 Part A 講嘅結果啦。第三個裝置就係想話俾我哋聽，第二個裝置之所以唔能夠產生正向光性，並不是因為成個杯牙鞘俾人哋斬咗去有任何嘅傷害。咁啊，杜帕斯咧就去到另一個科學家，都係想研究向光性。今次佢想研究嘅咧，唔係話邊個部分去探測光線，而係究竟一棵植物有啲咩嘅信號嘅傳送啦。今次咧，我哋都有四個裝置 A、B、C、D，A 咧就係完整嘅杯牙鞘 ，B 咧。都係斬咗個頭去。C 同 D 呢兩個裝置呢，個 tip 同埋個 body 呢，都係分開咗嘅。而佢哋中間呢，分別攝咗兩樣嘢。第一個呢，就係 milk block， 第二個呢，就係 agar block。佢哋分別係咩嚟嘅呢？雲母塊呢，係一個唔滲透嘅物質嚟嘅，而鉛脂塊呢，係一個可以滲透嘅物質。亦即係話，如果有一啲細嘅粒子呢，係可以穿透到鉛脂塊，由個 tip 呢，落到去個 body 個樹嘅。
咁大粒雲冇塊呢，無論你啲嘢大粒定細粒呢，佢都係穿透唔到過去㗎啦。而呢四個裝置呢，都有唔同嘅結果啦。D 同埋 D 呢，佢嘅杯牙鞘呢，都係有成長之餘，係會轉彎轉向去個單側光嘅。而 B 呢，同頭先一樣啦，唔成長又唔轉彎。而 C 呢，中間攝咗個雲冇塊之後呢，佢都係唔成長，都係唔轉彎。題目就問我哋啦，根據返呢個實驗，究竟有咩嘅結論呢？咁 Part C 其實要考我哋嘅呢，就係有關於向光性嘅信號傳送，而呢個信號呢，就係我哋喺書本學過嘅 o x i n 生長素。但係其實成條題目係唔需要去講有關於生長素如何令到一棵植物成長同埋轉彎。所以你係唔需要講嗰啲咩光面啊、暗面啊、高低濃度嘅生長素嘅，而且你亦都唔需要去講生長素呢個字，因為生長素呢個名呢，其實係喺個結論之後先出現嘅。我哋發現到有樣嘢就喺個鉛脂塊嗰樹，或者喺棵植物嗰樹係可以控制到佢嘅向光性，而呢一樣嘢我哋俾個名佢啦，哦，佢叫做生長素。所以啦，喺呢個題目入面呢，你係唔需要提及呢個字。咁如果呢條題目我唔用生長素呢個字講咩好啊？有啲嘢囉，喺個杯牙鞘個頂端呢，佢就係會製造有一啲嘅物質，而呢啲物質係能夠穿透到個鉛脂塊個頂端 ，from the tip。To reach the lower part of the coleoptera， 而就令到有一個轉彎嘅成長啦。但係嗰啲你喺書本學嗰啲話咩高低濃度啊，令到佢咩成長快咗定慢咗呢？係唔需要講啊因為喺個實驗入面，你知道咩係 oxygen 啊咩？你又唔知道佢一個光面定暗面邊一邊多啲嘅生長素呢？你都唔知道。你學咗返嚟啫嘛。第一個實驗冇講過俾你聽㗎嘛。Part C 仲有啲咩嘅變奏呢？其實就係 A、B、C、D。逐个逐个去问你，就要你去描述同埋解释下嗰支杯牙鞘嘅成长系点样啦。咁首先啦，你就要讲下佢嘅成长反应，即系话啦，识唔识成长同埋识唔识转弯啦。佢可以 growth with bending， 或者 no growth no bending， 或者好似头先嗰条题目嗰啲嘅 growth without bending 都好。而之后咧就解释翻生长素嘅作用啦。嗱，留意一下今次咧，佢唔系叫你去。得出結論啊！所以當你答呢一款嘅題型變奏嘅時候咧，成條第七條啦，除咗問科學探究，亦都問埋科學嘅本質啦。今次呢條題目，我哋見到兩個科學家對於植物嘅向光性做咗一系列嘅實驗啦。究竟當中體現咗啲乜嘢嘅科學本質呢？今次咧亦都 highlight 咗俾你哋嘅啦。科學知識係暫時性可變更嘅，科學知識係建基於或者顯生於對自然世界嘅觀察，進行科學探究需要創意同埋幻想能力。而科学亦都系一个不断发问嘅过程，所以所牵涉嘅科学本质咧就系尾二嗰两个啦。Darwin 同埋 Jensen 咧都系透过实验嘅结果去发展到有关于植物向光性嘅知识。而点解我哋话科学嘅知识系暂时性同埋可以变更啊？咁啊，因为 Darwin 嘅研究咧就只系俾我哋知道植物有向光性呢一样嘢，而 Jensen 就能够帮我哋发展得到。有關於植物向光性嘅多一啲嘅特質啦，女科本質嘅同學未係咁理解嘅。第一啦，就梗係睇翻科本質大全啦。第二啦，就係睇呢啲 M C 波幫你自己啦噃。好，又嚟到一點出發嘅時間啦。今次嘅題目咧就問向光性，今次咧就係以科學探究形式去問我哋嘅。下次可能又問我哋三個變數會係啲乜嘢嘢啦。不時間咧，今次嘅題目都有問我哋有關於實驗裝置同埋對照裝置嘅概念嘅，從中啦亦都問埋我哋科學嘅本質添。另一個路徑呢，就問下向光性嘅機制啦。今次呢條題目呢，係冇問過咩叫 o x i g n 嘅，就連 o x i g n 呢個字唔答都冇所謂嘅。但係下次可能就會問下你啦。一樖植物呢，擺咗喺個單側光嘅情況底下啦，究竟點解呢？佢會轉向個光去生長呢？或者問埋你究竟佢有咩反應呢？咁亦都啦，會問下你向光性嘅重要性啦。對於棵植物做光合作用有幾咁重要呢？對於棵植物嘅繁殖啦，向光性又有幾咁嘅重要呢？呢啲呢，大家都一定要溫返嘅。Question 7 is the question of scientific investigation. We are going to investigate the phototropism of the plants. Darwin placed four coleoptera in the dark box. Each with a hole at one side to allow light to pass through. There are four set up. Set up one with the intact coleoptera. Set up two, the tip of the coleoptera is removed, and set up three, upper crack cap placed on the tip. And in set up four, the coleoptera is embedded in the soil with the tip exposed, and we can see different results. Set up one and set up four, the coleoptera shows growth and bending, and for set up two, no growth, no bending. 
and for setup free growth without bending. From part A, from the result of the experiment, which part of the coleoptile is responsible for detecting the unilateral light? Support your answer with reason. So for part A, is checking the importance of the tip for phototropism. And actually, we learn it, at least you must be able to get one mark. But what you need to do is to explain your answer. So that's why the question also checks your skills of comparison. Compare the setup 1, 2, 3, 4. When we are comparing setup 1 and 2, we can know that the tip is essential for growth and bending. And when we are comparing setup 1 and setup 3, we know that the tip is essential for bending. And when we are comparing setup 1 and setup 4, same growth with bending response even if the lower part of the coleoptile is covered. So no matter from the result of the experiment or from our own knowledge, we know that the tip is responsible for detecting the unilateral light. We have to use the experiment result if the tip is removed or blocked from the stimuli, which is the unilateral light, no bending growth movement occurs. It is the observation from setup 1, 2, 3. So what about setup 4? On the other hand, the same response is produced even if the lower part of the coleoptile is covered in the soil. So no matter the body of the coleoptile is covered or not, the coleoptile can still show the growth and bending. We can further confirm that the tip is responsible for detecting the unilateral light. And for part B, we need to explain why it is necessary to have set up free in the experiment. In part B, the critical skills is to identify the control setup in the experiment. We talk about the control setup for many many times. It is identical to the experimental setup, except the factor under investigation is absent. And in this experiment, we know that for the setup 1, it is, and for setup 2, setup 3, setup 4, they are the control setup. Why we need the setup 3? Because it shows that the failure to produce response in setup 2 is not due to the effect of injury or damage when the tip is removed. If we only have the setup 1, which is the experimental setup, and then we try to conclude that, ah la, you see, the tip is responsible for detecting the unilateral light. And then someone may challenge you, no, 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 there may be some other part to detect the unilateral light. I don't trust you. Okay, so now I remove the tip and then I show you that. You see, I removed the tip already and then there is no growth, no bending. So you see, I am correct. And there will be someone still challenge you that. They say that, you know what, for the setup too, why there is no result, no growth, no bending? Because you damage the coleoptile already. You damage it, you kill it. So that's why no result. Okay, 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 okay. So I prepare a setup free. Keep the tape here, you see? But I put a opercrate cap to cover the tip. Finally, I see that the coleoptile, it grows but without bending. So it shows no bending, it's set up 2 and 3. You see, I am really correct. The tip is really responsible for detecting the unilateral light. So that's the importance of set up 3. In part C, another scientist, he also studied the phototropism. But now, he is going to study the nature of the signal transmission involved in the phototropism. So we can see the setup A, B, C, D, A with the intact coleoptile, B with the tip removed, and C, D. We cut the tip and place it on the mucor block and the agar block. So what are they? Mucor block, which is an impermeable matter, and for the agar block, which is a permeable matter. So if there is something very small, they can diffuse across the agar block. But no matter how big or how small is the matter, they cannot diffuse across the mucor block. And there is a hole here and allow the unilateral light. And we can see different results. Setup A and setup D, growth with bending. And setup B and C, no growth, no bending. What conclusion can we draw from this experiment? Part C is checking the concept about the signal transmission involved in phototropism. It's talking about how is the signal, the oxygen, transmit. However, it is pointless to talk about how oxygen exerts its effect. 
and how auxin controls the bending growth of the coleoptile. You don't need to mention the illuminated side, shaded side, higher or lower concentration of auxin to need to faster or slower growth of the shoot. But the key reminder is that you don't even need to mention the terms auxin as the name of the signal. It is because the name of the signal follows the conclusion. After we isolate the chemicals uh, from the agar block and then we name it auxins. How can you describe that something in the coleoptile? You use some substance or chemicals is already okay. Some substance are produced from the tip of the coleoptile which can diffuse through the agar block to reach the lower part of the coleoptile and exert the effect or lead to bending growth at the lower part of the coleoptile. And you may ask that, no, Mr. Leung, I learned a lot about the phototropism already. I can tell you everything. All the oxygen will move from the illuminated side to the shaded side, blah, 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 blah. Sorry, you don't need to talk about it. Because from these experiments, how can you know that the oxygen will move from the illuminated side to the dark side? You never know it. So you can just draw this conclusion based on the set of A, B, C, D only. And what about some question variation? It may ask you to describe and explain the response of the coleoptile in set of A, B, C, D. So in this question, it may not based on the experiment. In other words, it's not asking you to draw the conclusion based on the experiment. Therefore, you need to recall the concept about the auxin. For the first mark, you need to describe the growth response of the coleoptile. And for the following three marks, you need to explain the growth response with respect to the behavior of the auxins. That is what I have just mentioned. Or the movement of the auxin from the bright side to the dark side and then blah 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 blah. So you can watch this video to learn the four steps to KO phototropism questions. In part D, we can see that Darwin and Jensen, they did the experiment about the phototropism. Can you recall any nature of science are demonstrated in this scientific investigation? So I highlight some for you. Scientific knowledge is tentative and subject to change. Science knowledge is based on and or derived from observation of the natural world. Doing science requires creativity and imagination. Science is a process of ongoing inquiries. So we can see that both Darwin and Jensen used the result from their experiment to develop their understanding about phototropism in the plants and why the science knowledge is tentative and dynamic. Darwin's work only provides some understanding about the phototropism. Oh, the plant, they can bend and grow towards the unilateral light. But what's the reason? But why is the tip so essential? I don't have idea. And Jensen's result helped to develop further science knowledge. Oh, the tip is really important because there is something produced by the tip. Then this something can lead to the bending growth of the coleoptile. For the question 7 curriculum mapping, this question starts from the phototropism. It used the scientific investigation to check the concept. So maybe next time it may ask you the free variables. At the same time, it asks you about the experimental setup and the control setup. It also asks us about the nature of science. In other path, it can also ask you the mechanism of phototropism. This question, it doesn't ask you about the auxin, but maybe next time, it will ask you the behavior of the auxin. You need to talk about the importance of phototropism. For example, the plant it shows the positive phototropism. How is it so essential for the photosynthesis? So what about if the plant it can grow taller and taller how is it important for the reproduction 